Dear students, water contents in food is an important uh, subject that we, we'll, we are going to discuss. Uh, basically, it is the amount of moisture present in food, food products and its ingredients. And every food would actually have uh, a specific or a particular amount of moisture present uh, in, in that. Like, for example, most of the fruits and vegetables have 80 to 90 percent of the moisture um, as compared to some of the dry product, like milk powder would have a smaller amount of moisture present in them. And this water is present in different forms in different foods. Um, predominantly, it has three forms in which it is present in food. Uh, it is either present as a free form, um, free water, which is called as free water. So free water is basically like an ordinary um, uh, solvent. Uh, it shows ordinary solvent properties where uh, it dissolves certain uh, food in ingredients or salts, and it can be easily removed from the water, from the uh, food product when we dry that product. Another form is uh, chemically adsorbed water, like most of the water that is bound within the cell by protoplasm um, or within the cell um, other structures uh, and it is bound by protein that is called as chemically bound water, uh, chemically adsorbed water. And this water is actually uh, difficult to be removed from the food, uh, food products or food surfaces because this has got some um, th this has got some affinity with the proteins that are present within the food structure. Uh, the third form of uh, water is chemically bound water. This chemically bound water is basically uh, the water molecule that is attached to a mole other, another molecule like uh, water of hydration. For example, you can have sodium sulfate. It has got 10 uh, water molecules attached to it. So it becomes the part of the molecular structure and the molecular weight of that particular compound. And this is the kind of water that is the most difficult part to be removed from the uh, food, um, food products when we dry those foods. If you talk about the importance of water, it is an important quality criteria in terms of food preservation. Like most of the food, um, its shelf life would depend upon how much water is present uh, within that food. For example, in certain dried milk or veg dehydrated vegetables, spices and herbs, um, the amount of water actually decide like what would be the shelf life of that food. For example, if higher is the moisture in case of uh, dried vegetables or milk, it would have shorter sh shelf life and there are more chances that it would be degraded, uh, chemically degraded or it would be um, spoiled by microorganisms. So preservation is actually uh, one of the um, indication that we can get from amount of water that is present uh, within food. Uh, it is also a quality factor in certain products like jams and jellies and preserves, food syrups, uh, where if we have uh, higher moisture content, it might, uh, might deteriorate the quality of those, uh, that specific product. Or sometimes we can see like uh, crystallization of uh, sugars in case of jams or in case of honey. That could happen because there might be less amount of moisture, uh, less, lesser amount of moisture available in the, those foods. Another very important aspect of food um, moisture content is basically its uh, transportation and uh, storage facilities. Like, for example, most of the food, we, um, uh, we can easily transport food uh, when we have got lesser moisture content. So most of the time when we have to um, make the food transported from one place to another, we remove the moisture content. So that would mean actually removing the weight from that food. So that food would be carrying less volume, it would have lesser weight, so we can transport it from one country to another country or maybe within one city to another city. Uh, for example, like, like your uh, concentrated milk, uh, your um, uh, concent liquid cane sugar, uh, concentrated food juices. So we reduce the moisture content so that uh, it's easy to carry uh, these um, ingredients to different places due to the lesser volume and weight. Um, so that really helps in, in terms of storage and transportation as well. Uh, on the other hand, moisture is also a compositional standard. Like you would know that most of the food uh, would have uh, moisture content as a legal um, binding on certain foods, do not, not to exceed to a certain level of moisture content. Like for example, in case of your cheese or flour or pineapple or meat, 
if we have got higher moisture content, that might be a legal uh, regulatory issue, like most of the regulat uh, regulatory standards does not allow uh, a certain amount uh, to exceed a certain amount of moisture content within those foods. So it is actually a um, compositional standard that has to be followed. Uh, it is also important from nutrition point of view that if you have got higher moisture content within a food, so that would mean actually we are having lesser amount of other nutrients available within that particular uh, food. Um, similarly, most of the uh, nutrients are expressed in terms of uh, dry weight on the weight, no, dry weight basis or wet base, wet, uh, wet wet weight basis. Like in case of wet weight basis, we would look at. Um, the amount of nutrient within the whole um, food, including the water content as well. Uh, so most of the time, if you look at the nutrition composition of food, it can be either expressed at dry base, dry weight basis or wet weight basis uh, amount of nutrient present, present within a food. So of course, if it's wet weight basis, it would mean that uh, we include the water content as, uh, as the whole overall composition of that food.